Imagine a world where you can actually get work done while you're commuting to work or a world where you don't have to pull over to help a crying child in the back seat. We've seen it in the movies, but how close are we really to being able to take our hands off the wheel for good? And what will it look like when it happens? Marie Saavedra set out to find the answer. You've got to hand it to Hollywood. They know how to make us fantasize about the future of driving. Meet George Jetson. Flying cars may be far off. Three, two, one. But we see new bells and whistles every year at the Chicago Auto Show. So flying may be far flung, but we wondered how close are we to a car so smart? All we have to do is kick back and ride. We started our search for answers at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove. A world where there is 100% automation 100% of the time in 100% of the places is still a long ways away. But the exciting part is the future is upon us now. The future is here, according to Ashley Lambrix. She's the general manager of Blue Cruise the active driving assist system available in some Fords. It's the software that makes autonomous driving possible, as in the cars, computers, and sensors can drive for you. It builds on trusted technologies like adaptive cruise control and lane centering and adds on that ability for you to drive hands-free on the highway. Excited to get behind the wheel. You heard her, hands-free. Now, admittedly, I'm not a big car gal, so this was something I had to see to believe. A lot of consumers feel the same way. This year, AAA found 66% of drivers surveyed express fear about fully self-driving vehicles. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt it. We pulled onto I-88, one of the major highways, mostly outside of major cities, highlighted on this map, showing where drivers can use the feature. I hit the adaptive cruise control button, and when the display said hands free, you can take your hands off the bell. My heart is beating. Okay, ready. go ahead, give it a go. It feels so wrong. From there, the car just drove. <laughs> no hand. And I learned a camera on the dash was watching me too. If you take your eyes off the road for too long, there is a set of escalation warnings that are audio, visual, oh, wow. and then haptic to alert you to resume your attention to the road. In an emergency, drivers can take over at any time. But even knowing that, it was my physical reaction that surprised me the most. I'm I'm like out of my body right now. I don't know what to do with my hands. It's, you know, because it's fighting and it's that habit. Sure. But it feels not, I feel very sure if it's keeping me within a good distance of everybody and wow. This technology falls into one of six levels of automation determined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. At zero, there's no computer assistance. Level one, feet off, adds adaptive cruise control to brake and speed. Level two, hands off, adds lane centering and some help steering. But in each of these three, the driver must pay full attention, making the Ford I'm in a level two. I think most cars today will be somewhere between level one and level two. We asked Philip Kamshoff, senior partner with McKinsey and a consultant in the auto industry, to talk us through the rest. Level three would be what we would say, hands off, eyes off, brain on. That is highly automated, and BMW has it in its 7 Series, saying drivers can read, work, or watch videos in some conditions. But the driver needs to be ready to take over in seconds. Hello from Waymo. Level 4 is fully automated and on the roads right now in the driverless taxi. We're seeing them being deployed already in San Francisco and Phoenix. They're coming now to L.A., Houston, Austin, Atlanta. Warmer weather means fewer obstacles. So that's still going to take a couple of years until we see robo taxis sort of move up into the snow belt. So don't hold your breath for that rollout in Chicago just yet. But when it happens, that would be level five. A driverless car that operates in any conditions. But even then, would you get in one? Customers have to feel safe. Cities and states have to think about added traffic and regulations. Then paying for systems like Blue Cruise and other companies' similar features can send price tags out of the budget of some everyday car buyers. Still, Kamshoff believes the growing pains of new tech will be worth it. I mean, there's 40,000 people that die in car accidents every year, right? And a third of our 
carbon emissions are causing a cost from transportation, yeah. right? And we're wasting 60 minutes per day in the car every day. All of that we can change, but it, it's a question of how fast can we get the technology and the adoption at scale. Back in the car on 88. We do have room. Yep, go ahead. Have your turn signal. We are changing lanes. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was amazing. And that was just a tap of the tap of tap the traffic. signal. Tap of your turn signal. That's right. And I can see how hands free driving could make a ride more physically relaxing. It is mimicking the behavior of an active driver. Just to give that increased comfort. So flying, this is not, with respect to the Jetsons. But the features do feel futuristic. And by 2034, the industry hopes they'll feel more commonplace. As someone who's, you know, admittedly not, not a car girl, I did not have a sense really of this technology in a, in a tangible way until being behind the wheel like this. So it's, it's very interesting. And it does make me uh, curious about what the future holds. In Downers Grove, Marisa Vedra, CBS News, Chicago. Consumer Reports ranks Ford's Blue Cruise the number one driver assistance system on the road.